Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are watching this. Um, guys, this is Mr. Griffin back again with another art lesson. It's been a while. Um, I know I was doing a video every day and I was doing uh, some origami and different lessons that I had done in my uh, classroom. And with it being the end of the year, um, I got one lesson that is one of my favorites. I've done this. Um, I've done this a lot. I've done this every year with my fifth grader. So this is a fifth grade lesson. So if you have a fifth grader or if you want to attempt this, uh, feel free. Um, this is my Dragon Eye project. So I've been doing this Dragon Eye project for a long time. Um, I think you can find Dragon Eye projects with elementary, uh, middle school, and there's different techniques. I've seen some uh, done, um, and I always, I showed these, I have a picture that I actually have saved um, at school that I show all my fifth graders. I say, I say, now look, this is a fifth grade. This is a class from fifth grade and she's showing these like six images. And I say, I promise you, if you follow my lessons, yours will all look better than these. And that's my goal is to always push my students a little bit further. Um, and I'm gonna show you my project and I'm gonna go ahead and try my best to show you the process. Now. This is an art project that takes about three weeks for my fifth graders. We start it um, the first day. Uh, the second day, I, I make them work the entire like 50 minutes or so. The second week we come in, we give them the project and I say, you cannot be done this week. I said, you have to work. You have to go further and further and further building up. Um, they get kind of aggravated with me on that. And then the third week, um, we finish it up, any other little like retouches and everything. Um, and it doesn't take normally three weeks. It, like I said, takes the first week starting it out. The second week I make them work the entire uh, class period. And the third week we're fine tuning it. So if you've waited this long, it's about two minutes. Here is my Dragon Eye project that I show my students. Um, I show them this project and this is the size that we're working on. So this might give a comparison for you guys. This is 12 by 18 and I make all my students work from 12 by 18. Now I have had students uh, show me their dragon eye that they did at home where they use color and they would use like crayons or oil pastels or, or colored pencils and that's great. All of that is wonderful. Fine. I want them to experiment. I want them to try. I want them to have fun with it. Um, my goal for my fifth graders are is to really work on value. And we want to have a wide variety of value. We want the lightest of light. So I want like pure white. I want the darkest of darks of like pure black. And I want every like gradation of gray throughout their project. So I make them multiple times take their art project up to mine and I have to make them compare it. So here's one that's definitely not done. And I show that I, I take one and I say, I say, well, now does that match like the value scale of this one? And they're like, no, I say, okay. So you, what do you need to do? What, what do you need to do to add more? Could you really define this? Could you get rid of some of these lines by putting your finger, smooth it in? Can you give a highlight? Can you give a shadow? I was like, I need more. This is a good example of you've got black, you've got gray and a little bit of white. Now this has everything in between. And this is my goal for my students. So um, today I'm not gonna be able to get one of these finished for you in the time period. So I'm gonna go to Shen and show you. Now if you have, um, if you have charcoal, at your house here's an example uh that i did with only charcoal so um i have some vine charcoal vine charcoal is like willow it's it's basically actual wood that's turned into charcoal uh you can have pressed charcoal or like a charcoal pencil um these are a lot harder to erase um basically i let my students um for this assignment if you're wanting to do something like this um, we start off with pencil. We then move on to our vine charcoal, which is super easy to erase. It does not stay. And then I let them use this to really get hard lines. And then if they want black, 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 
I get out oil pastels. Now, the oil pastels, I tell them, I say, I say, you can do this. So this texture that I have over here um, is actually just an oil pastel rubbing. So um, the very last thing that I tell them that they can do is like a, take an oil pastel and just kind of like go over it and it'll get this fun little texture. So um, we use all different materials for this assignment. Start off with pencil, move on to vine or willow charcoal. They use compressed charcoal pencil. And if they don't, they don't have to. I tell them, I say, you don't want to use this for everything because if you make a mark on this, it's not easily erased okay so this needs to be one of the last things that you're up to that you know you're making a final like mark and then oil pastels once again if you're done and you don't want to erase it and you want to make a solid mark to get textures that's what we do so those are all the materials that i use in my classroom for this assignment feel free to uh change it up and do other things as well so Let's go back to this one. This one is just uh, willow charcoal with the starting out. And I use some compressed charcoal to get some outlines and, and lines a little bit darker. Okay. Um, this one is with just pencil. So I think you can see that. That doesn't have too much of a glare on it. Um, this is with just pencil, which is what I'm probably going to do today um both of these were done today as well i just worked on these pretty quickly um i would probably work on it a little bit more fine tune it um but i if if i had a fifth grader that turned this in i would be extremely happy with this and i'd say they met all the requirements and i would say are you happy with it could you do more yes could i do more could i really define these little scales yes could i define these spikes and everything more could I do that and clean it up? Yes. And that's what I try to tell my students. Please, 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 please try to define your stuff. All right. So enough about that. Let's go ahead and get started. So all you need is a piece of paper. I like to turn it uh, landscape wise. Uh, that way you can get your eye however you want. The smaller you make your eye, the more skin you're going to have. I think that's self-explanatory. If you have a big eye, then you're not going to have um, a bunch of eyelids. You're not going to have room for all the spikes. So I have a size that I kind of like, like to work off of so you can still have extras. Um, but if you look on this big 12 by 18 piece of paper, I mean, this is a large eyeball. And I tell the students, we're going to make our square and everything big. You're still going to have plenty of room. So... That being said, there's all sorts of different ways to do this. But um, I like to start off by telling them to use their pencil on the side. Now, if you draw like you normally would, you're going to make a pretty strong line. Okay. Um, and it's going to be hard to erase. So I have them um, take your pencil and lay it on the edge. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a square. Now, a lot of this square, a lot of this square is going to get erased anyways. Oh, I tell my fifth graders all the time. I was, like, I was like, okay, boys and girls, you are going to be angry at me today. We are going to be doing work, and then I'm going to have you erase the work, and then I'm going to have you put the work back down, and I'm going to have you erase the work, and I'm going to have you put the work back down. I was like, this, this project, the kids seem very repetitive because we're doing something, we're getting rid of it. We're doing something, we're getting rid of it. So start off with a square. And then inside the square, you're going to draw a circle. And I say, you cannot just draw your circle one time. You have to draw it a minimum of 50 times. They're like, what? And I say, yes, you have to draw it 50 times. And so we start off at the top, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This square is just kind of giving us a guide, a guide of where our circle is going to be. So you start off, and you draw your circle. Now, once I have it, that's one, and I do it like two three, four, and I don't have to do it 50 times. I just tell the students, I was like, you want to be confident um, in your circle. And actually the more you draw it, the smoother and the rounder it gets. And so now <laughs> I will say there are some students uh, that will make their circle and it'll just be like, I'm like, oh, maybe we should redefine this. Um, so try your best to keep your circle in the same area whenever you're doing it a whole bunch of times so i've got a circle we've got the square 
And now it's our time to get started with our eyelids, okay? You're going to start off um, down at the bottom left corner. So bottom left corner of your eye, not the bottom left corner of the piece of paper. If you if you wanted to, you can. Like, I'm not saying you have to do it just like me, um, but this is a pretty good idea of how to, to get started. And then you take it from there. Evolve it however you want. But I'm going to start over here, the bottom of my circle, and scoot over to the left. Don't go all the way down. Um, and then you're going to actually cut. You're going to make like an S shape. You're going to make an S shape that curves through the eye. I want you to make sure you're cutting it through the eye. So watch. As it goes up, I'm going to cut through right about the middle. Look, I'm already at, I'm only at the middle. I'm going to keep on curving it, but I'm going to come around. So watch. I'm going to cut through the middle. I'm cutting part of my eye off. And then at this point, here's a couple of things. I tell my students, you can do a few things from this point. If you wanted to, you could have this just going out, maybe coming down a little bit. Um, you could have it going out and you could have like a few spikes on it. Um, or, and this is something I started adapting uh, my lesson um, a couple years ago, is I say, once you go over your eye, I want you to start hugging the eye and I want you to come down to this point. So it's more like a, a realistic eyelid um, where the top eyelid goes over and then the bottom eye is going to connect it. Uh, I don't care uh, one way or the other. You can do all three. And I tell the students that I say, I say, you can do all three just to put the lines on there and you might decide to erase it later on. Okay. So there's my first eyelid. And my second eyelid is going to start a little bit lower, maybe even a little bit closer, maybe a little lower. I don't care what, how, how you're going to do it for right now. I might start a little bit closer. You're still at the bottom of the eye. Now, this time, I tell them I want them to try to hug the oval because really, this is like your iris. This is, this is basically the iris of your lizard, your dragon kind of creature. So we're going to kind of hug this circle. So watch. I'm going to hug this circle, and then I'm going to come back up. Now, at this point, once again, you can connect. You can go all the way up and around. Um, so I'm going to go all the way back up and connect it to here. You could, and this is where you could put a couple like little spikes. Uh, so you could have some extra little flare. Uh, maybe it has like some feathers. Uh, maybe it has some flare. Um, or it doesn't have to. So I like to have like some kind of like, think uh, anatomically. You've got an eyelid that comes over and an eyelid that goes up. Maybe the bottom one doesn't move as much. The top one is the one that, that rolls with it up and down. So uh, maybe the top, the bottom one is just more like sitting there aimlessly. All right. Now, if you've got two eyelids, good job. But we're going to do two more little curves or wrinkles to add um, variety to our eyes. So the second one is going to be above. And it's going to kind of basically hug that top circle. So this is basically where the eye opens and there's just a wrinkle in here. So I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, kind of like hug that top part. And this is another part where you can um, have fun with it. Maybe you want to make more spikes if you have more room. Uh, maybe you maybe you just want to like, you could have stopped as well. You could have stopped. Uh, you have choices at this point. Um, don't let my drawing dictate exactly how you have you want to do it. So um, I'm just going to draw like another little curve. And then the bottom one, I'm going to do another little wrinkle. Not like a necessarily for another little eyelid, uh, but just a little wrinkle to give variety. And then at this point, I sometimes have the kids do an eyebrow depending on how far they have. I have to just draw another little wrinkle, uh, a little line up here or something. Um, I've had students do uh, eyebrow rings. You know what? I might even do that on this one just for the fun of it. Because um, it's a dragon, it's going to be fun. You get to do whatever. Uh, and if they want to draw, like I said, another little curve um, down here. All right. If you've done this, this is where the first stage of my fifth graders get angry at me, okay? After here, um, 
I tell them you're going to take your hand, you can take a paper towel, and you're going to basically try to erase it with a paper towel. So I just kind of like have them like rub it, rub it, rub it, and you're just going to like rub it till it's like faded. Um, and we rub, 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 rub. You're getting rid of most of it, um, but you're rub, 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 rub. You can still see the outline, but we're just rubbing, 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 fading it away, um, almost to ex like non-existent anymore. Okay. And this is whenever we get really dirty, and that's okay. Um, we we get really dirty on these days. All right, and then at this point, after you've got it all gray and it's all muddy, I tell them, now we're going to erase part of the circle. So the first two eyelids that you did, that's the only part of the circle that you're going to keep. Everything above it, you're going to erase. So watch. I'm going to erase that circle that is above the eyelid. Now. We're going to turn that part white, and we're going to come back and put more gray on it for right now. But but for right now, we're just going to get rid of that square um, and that circle above it. And then look, right here below it, I want to get rid of it so you cannot see it. I know we drew it, and I know that you're like, couldn't I have just drawn a curve? Yes, you could have just drawn the eyelid and drawn a curve. But now I know my curve is circular. I know my curve connects. Instead of just drawing a curve and hoping that it creates the illusion of a circle, I've drawn the circle, I've erased the part that's not needed, and now I'm left with a really good curve of an eye, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. I'm gonna erase this little bit of the square. I don't know if you guys can see it. I can still see part of that square that I don't want to see. That was my framework, that was my grid work, okay? Now, after you've done this, you can come back. Um, I start, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and have fun with it. I'm going to pretend that this is an actual assignment. So I'm going to say, once you have this, you could skip over to your vine charcoal or your willow leaf charcoal. Feel free, like I said, you can do pencil. Imagine this vine charcoal as as as, as it would be if it was just pencil and continuing to define your eye now. Okay, so I'm now going to re-go back over the lines that I want, the lines that I want, and then uh, the lines that I want to keep. The lines that I want to keep, um, not for sure what that's going to look like, and, and then you re-go over the part of the curve of the eye that you were keeping. So, and if you want to at this point, you can make this part dark. Now, the problem with vine charcoal is look, I can erase it almost completely with my hand. I can erase it completely with my hand. So, uh, you've gotta be careful uh, with, with just doing vine charcoal. So it's not going to get perfectly dark. It looks great whenever you're drawing it, but if you don't put a, a, a hairspray or a fixative on there, it's going to be able to fade. So pencil is great. It's not going to do the same thing. Um, and that's whenever I tell the students we might want to move to this as well. Once you're confident in your, in your marks. Once you're confident in what your marks are going to be. All right. So here's the start of our dragon eye. And then we say... Um, what is what is your pupil going to be now as you can see before i did a diamond um i have done a circle i think i did a diamond earlier and then i also had a lightning bolt um you can do whatever you want i've seen students talk about ear or uh, not eardrops uh that would be weird don't do eardrops i don't know how to do eardrops but i'm going to do a raindrop uh, a little bit different and you could do a heart, you could do a flame. Um, I tell them to do also, I've seen the uh, like a Celtic cross kind of things. I've seen students do scars uh, through their pupil. I think they're just great. Please, 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 please look up pictures of dragon's eyes. There's lots of artists that do dragon's eyes. Find your own unique vision, your world, whatever. So I'm going to do a raindrop. I, I mean, not that it even makes sense, but maybe my uh, dragon is a water dragon. So it's actually got some kind of like weird raindrop pupil. Okay. Um, 
Now, a part of the pupil might want to stay white, while everything else could become black. So this is a pupil. Now, parts of it might be blacker than others. Parts of it might not be black, but you might want to keep a little bit of it white with the majority of it black, and I could always erase that. Um, also, if you think anatomically, and this is an eyeball, uh, the eyelid is going over, and depending on how your creature is looking, depending on how your creature is looking, maybe the shadow is coming from a different direction, um, but if the eyelid is coming over, the top of the eye might be a little bit uh, darker. So you might do that. Now this is just a highlight. So we've got eyes, uh, the sun's coming down uh, and it's hitting just ever so slightly. Uh, and we've got that. So, and I know that I'm, I'm not happy with this. I, I could probably work on this for a long time. Um, and I might go back to pencil. And I tell the students, please feel free to go back to pencil. Um, Whenever you want to, um, whenever you want to, go back to pencil and and really define because you can you can still define on top. You can mix media this all you want and have fun with it. Um, if charcoals are too messy for you, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a shadow cast, kind of like if you notice, I've still defined my wrinkle. And I've still defined where the eyelid is. Oopsie daisy, what is that? Uh, I've still defined where the eyelid is. Um, but I also want a shadow cast like right here. And then I can really uh, put my finger in there. And, and this is where the charcoal pencil really works. Because um, a charcoal pencil, you cannot erase easily. Uh, you cannot erase this easily. This is this is no longer. This is how you would define a mark in my class with that. So we've got that. Ooh. Um, you can have all sorts of things. I see that I'm about at 22 minutes. I don't want you guys to get too bored. So um, I might continue this. I might not. This is the basic concept. Um, I tell my students, please don't be afraid to put a lot of charcoal on there. And then guess what? Once you put charcoal on there and you get it all over it, I'm going to tell you to rub it. I'm going to tell you to then come back and erase the part that you want to be highlighted. I'm going to tell you to erase the part that you want highlighted. And you're going to keep the shadows and the grays. Uh, you can define your eyes with the side of a, an eraser. There's so much that I do with this lesson. Um, and I don't know if I've done it justice for this little short period of time. Um, I don't do all of this in one setting for my students. I don't want you to think that I talk the entire time in my class, but I do show them how to do it. I show them how to get started. And then we kind of work on it and we build it up. We build it up. And then I start showing them, um, I was like, maybe you want to add, uh, like I said, a an eyebrow ring. So maybe you wanted to add a ring. And how would that ring look? Um, how would that ring look whenever it, it's going inside of your dragon? And I'm not saying they had to do an eyebrow ring. Don't get upset at me if you don't like eyebrow rings or whatnot. I'm just saying maybe your dragon wants some decorations and some furniture and some accessories. Furniture? I don't know. Maybe you can put furniture on there. Couldn't hurt. But jewelry and some extras, nuances and stuff that you can have. And don't be afraid to make a mistake. Oh my goodness, I tell the students all the time, if you make a mistake, there's such thing as a pencil or an eraser and we can erase it and we can try our best again and we can build it up and then you can add shadows and stuff. So 
I don't know what's going on with this dragon. I don't know where it's going to end up at. I hope you enjoyed it. I want you to, once again, we'll end with these. We'll end with these. These are more closer to an end result. They still take a while for me, guys. I, I was like, obviously, I've been working on this for about 25 minutes, um, and I'm nowhere near as far as this. I tell my students, you have to compare. You have to come back. You have to get more grays. You got to get more variations. Um, have fun with this. Look at other dragon's eyes online. Come up with your scales. This is a fun little thing that I do. Uh, I like this texture. All this is is like I think of a heartbeat, and I just kind of let my pencil kind of like wrinkly kind of like going over through here. And I put little marks through here to give my texture uh, on my dragon. So I do that a lot. All right, guys. I don't want to take you guys up too much more, more time. I love you. Be safe. Have fun. Um, enjoy these dragon eyes. They're all looking at you. So hopefully you guys are going to have fun with these. Make something fun. Um, tell me how you liked it in the comments. And come back a while and maybe I'll make some more videos. All right. Be safe. Bye.